dear students welcome in the previous sessions we have seen what is enterprise business intelligence how do you define enterprise business intelligence or what are the features of enterprise business intelligence along with that we have seen who are termed as information workers and the characteristics of information workers in this session i will be taking you all to the topic enterprise data models so enterprise data model is actually an integrated view of data produced and consumed across an entire organization so it is a 360 degree view of different source of data different uh, sources that has been generating this type of data and the data flow and how much amount of data that it, the organization is being produced and how much amount of data it is consuming and all the associated information about the data so normally enterprise data models will be represented as a graphical model okay which will help you analyze which are the major entities which are the major enterprise level data dictionaries available and all the associated things so it is a single integrated definition of data so when i say the enterprise data model it is just like a, a unified view of all the data that is being generated and consumed in an enterprise so it is it, it does not address or it is not dependent on how the data is physically sourced stored processed or processed or accessed because it is a high level view of things uh, at the physical level uh, in the enterprise data model we are not concerned with the, how the data is being stored but it 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 uh, it collects and analyzes uh, which are the type of data uh, that is being generated or uh, uh, the view of the data that is been produced and consumed in an organization so enterprise data models enable the identification of shareable and redundant data across functional and organizational boundaries so when i say the enterprise data you may try to understand that enterprise data is any data that is important for the business to uh, make some decisions or to derive some additional value out of those data so the enterprises will not save the data if they found that the data is no is of no use okay so enterprise data meaning it is it, it is nothing like you are storing all the data that an enterprise is generating but rather you will be analyzing which data is important do we need this data if it is needed then that will be stored so integrated data provides or the enterprise data models in general provides a single version of the truth meaning wherever you check for the data the data will be uh, available correctly and the, the data is uh, 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 true as well okay that doesn't mean that different stakeholders will be seeing different uh, uh, types of data or different uh, versions of data okay all will be seeing a single version of the truth so enterprise data models will help you achieve this goal so obviously the edm or enterprise data models will minimize the redundancy the duplications of data the disparity of data and the errors inside the data so edm or enterprise data models will be consisting of multiple levels in the first level it is shown as a subject area model in the second one second level is known as a conceptual model and the third level is known as a conceptual entity model so these three levels are there in an enterprise data model so in short edm or enterprise data model is a combination of subject area model conceptual model as well as a conceptual entity model then only the enterprise data model will be complete so let's look into each of these levels in detail the subject area modeling is an initial level of an enterprise data model it is just like a type of metadata metadata meaning it is a data about data right you are storing some in some data about the data that is being generated that consists of numerous fact tables so fact tables are tables that uh, uh, that will be storing some facts which are common to the businesses okay i'm not talking about any transactional data but rather the fact tables for example every organization will be having the customers so customer there will be a fact table about the customers describing the type of customers uh, customer segments and all the related information in every company there will be a support team so support is another fact 
So revenue is another fact. Okay, these are some of the information that will be stored in the fact tables. So the subject area model designing, developing and organizing the enterprise data is very difficult. So the strategy, the best strategy that the organizations will be implementing is to divide and conquer. So you will be first analyzing the bigger picture, then you will be breaking it down into smaller pieces and then you will be defining the enterprise data model. So average number of subject areas for any organization is it is between 10 to 12, but it is not a hard rule. It depends on the organization. There can be organizations which will be having maybe less than 10 uh, subject areas or sometimes it will be growing up to 15 or 20 subject areas depends on the organization, the nature of business that they are doing. So each subject area is a high level classification of data representing a group of concepts pertaining to a major topic of interest to an organization. So now let's look into this image. In this image, you can see several concepts in the boxes. So what you see in this box is known as a concept. So this is a case of an airline ticket booking. So in the airline ticket booking, you can see the customer concept, the booking, employee, schedule, ticket, flight, information technology, finance, sales, pricing, inventory, location, maintenance, equipment. So you can find this, the 14 categories. So this is a typical example of how, how a subject area will look like. So for the airline businesses, all these are subject areas. The customer is a subject area. The IT, the schedule of flights, the maintenance, the inventory, the ticket, the flight, everything is subject areas. So uh, in an enterprise subject area model or ESAM, the subject areas can be grouped by three high level business categories. So if you check the previous uh, example, all these concepts can be categorized into any of these three categories. These three categories are revenue, operation and support. These three are the uh, high level business categories. For example, the airline subject areas are grouped as the ticket booking, the sales, inventory, pricing, etc. can be treated or grouped under the revenue category. The operation, the operational uh, aspects, the flight, the location, the equipment, the maintenance, the schedule, etc. will be added into the operation or grouped into the operation. Then IT is the support, the IT, the finance, employee, customer. So all these are denoted by the group, the support. So every, for every businesses, it can be categorized into either revenue, either operation or support. Now let's see what is subject area ta data taxonomy. So what do you mean by taxonomy? Taxonomy is a hierarchical classification. Hierarchical classification of things associated with a specific domain. So in data taxonomy, it is a hierarchical classification tool applied to data for understanding, architecting, designing, building and maintaining data systems. It, it may include several hierarchical levels of classification, but how, wh why we should create this taxonomy? So if you create this taxonomy in a hierarchical form, then you will be, you can easily design the enterprise data models by referring the hierarchy. So in this case, you can see a data resource and there are three categories of data. One is foundational data. Second is the transactional data. And the third one is the informational data. So every sort of data, can be categorized under these categories. So under, I mean, for every uh, these ca uh, for every categories, there will be subcategories as well. And this hierarchy will go up to maybe three or four levels or even more. Now let's see what is foundational data. The foundational data meaning it is used to define the support or create another data. So it includes the reference type data, the metadata, the data required to perform business transactions are known as the foundational data. And in the second case, it is known as the transactional data. The data that is being generated from uh, transactions or the business operations. The one speciality of a transactional data, meaning it is dynamic in nature. Dynamic meaning it is ever changing. The customers will be buying your products. So for every purchase, there will be some information that that will be recorded in your database. And that is a transactional data, the data that is being generated from a transaction. 
Now the third category of data is informational data. So informational data is primarily the historic, summarized or de derived data. It is primarily, it is created from the operational or transaction data. And this informational data is being used primarily for decision making purposes. It, it, it is being used by decision support systems and occasionally used within the operational system for operational decision support. So if you check the informational data is a type of data that is being uh, uh, used for taking decisions. Now, recollect the previous example that we have seen, example of an airline. In the case of an example, in, the, in, this, case, in this case, we can categorize the equipment, the IT, employee, sales, location, customer into the foundational because these are the base category from which you will be generating the transactional data so let's assume the transactional data will be having tickets booking flight finance maintenance so all these activities will be generating a operational data or a transactional data dynamic in nature when a customer books a ticket obviously the data will be there the booking the flight charting flight flight scheduling all these activities will be generating data the finance transactions the maintenance all this will be creating some business transaction data. Now, the third category is the informational data. So, according to this transactional data or collecting and analyzing the transactional data, if the key stakeholders will be taking some decisions on the pricing, for say, after analyzing the data, they came to know that their competitor flight is uh, has reduced the cost of tickets, then obviously you will also be forced to retain your customers. Inventory, when to load, the flight parts, then the schedules. You you find that uh, in a particular sector, some uh, uh, more demand will be there for booking. So you will be obviously creating new schedules for the for the flights. So this is how you categorize data: the foundational, transactional, as well as, as, well as informational data. So how to create a subject area model? So creating a subject area model. Uh, is not uh, an easy task because you, you need to first identify the concepts associated with the specific business. So primarily, uh, to create a subject area model, we need to work closely with the business subject matter expert under the guidance of any existing enterprise knowledge. So all these enterprises will be having enterprise knowledge bases and with the help of sub subject ma matter experts who, are, uh, who have year, many years of experience in defining this business, or business terms or business subjects so they will be working together to create a subject area model so subject areas common to most organizations are identified first okay so there there may be some concepts or there may be some subject areas which are very, which common to all the business those will be identified first then they will be identifying the uh, the business specific uh, subject areas okay so additional subject areas are then defined, ending up with a complete list of the official subject areas and their definitions. These are then, this process is not complete. These are then validated with the business expert. Okay, they will validate mean they will make sure that, okay, these are the subject areas that can be treated for this specific businesses. This is how, this is what a subject area model is all about. So in this session, we have learned what is enterprise business intelligence and what are the components of enterprise data models such as the subject area model the conceptual model and the conceptual entity model and in this session we have seen the subject area model what is it what uh, we have seen an example and how to create a subject area model the rest of the models will be discussed in the subsequent sessions thank you for listening